Fish on! What's everybody? What's up, everybody? Joe Simon, like diamonds. Got Luke over here fighting, I'm guessing, a trout. Oh, yeah, decent size. Yeah, decent size trout. Man. And we are drifting the flats. And there are days like today, if you're watching this, you can tell it's gloomy. We're doing here a live food cast. We have no trolling motor. We had a little bit of rain earlier. And there are days like today, we've got to hit there in the summer where it's just tough and it's a grind, especially if you don't have a trolling motor. That's a nice, solid trout. Yeah, it's a nice little, little Suck Tampa down Bay trout. The there. Leprechaun. And so we want to do a podcast just to show you guys exactly what we do when we're in situations like this, which we try to avoid, but it does happen. You can't always control your trolling motor deciding to work or not work. And we did a podcast on this prior where we just power pulled down next to a channel. Now, because of the wind, remember last time we had no wind, hardly any current. Now, at least we have a nice wind and we're letting the wind just take us down. It's like a perfect situation for it. Just taking us down the edge of this flat, right where it meets the channel. You can see boats coming by. The bad news is boats come right near you when you're getting somewhat close to the channel and you will get some big waves. So it can be a little bit tougher to do this in a small skiff. But doggone it, it works. We've already caught a couple of trout and finally uh, said, all right, next one, we're gonna start the podcast. So Luke got the next one. Now it's up to me fishing with tailless Fred. See what we can do. Yeah, there's a lot of small pinfish and puffer fish down there messing with us. So tail's bitten off, let it ride. Sometimes actually it's better. There's a lot of small bait around. So the, uh, the tailless, you know, as a, couple inches of the tails get bitten off, sometimes that's a, that's a benefit. So I made a mistake for many years of throwing those away. In reality, could have just kept fishing with them and probably caught more fish. Yeah. We just had our friend, old Captain Mike Anderson, come by and say hello. The old salt strong boat sometimes sticks out a little bit. He's like, what are you guys doing over here? And he said, we'd be trying to catch some trout, brother Mike. Yeah, in many cases, these trout will kind of hang together. Um, so I, so we don't have a troll motor, but we do at least have a power pole. And so when I hooked up there, you know, stop, put the power pole down. That way we could fan cast the area, see if there's any, any friends. Oh, and uh, since we're not getting any bites, we're just gonna keep, I just lifted the power pole, we're gonna keep drifting up. And we're gonna use the motor to kind of be the, the way that we can steer ourselves and control our drift. And they call it a rudder. In yes. sailing world, don't we? Joel? Joel's like, yeah. So um, now I want to go a little bit more to the left. We want to get right next to the channel. The odds of the most fish are going to be right on that depth contour. So I'm going to kick the boat over to the left here, and we're going to be casting distance of the channel. It's the most expensive rudder you can ever buy. <laughs> 300 horsepower. <laughs> but Just make do with whatever you have. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. You saw the post I did about uh, Jackson. All he wants to do is go out in the canoe oh, now. Yeah. Oh, there's no oh, Luke's on again. Doggone leprechaun. I yeah, want to know where the gold's at. This Alabama leprechaun, this is uh, it's basically a five inch soft plastic jerk bait rigged on a, uh, a weighted hook. And it just drives these trout crazy. Yeah. This is I might problem. actually go to that since I'm yeah, down this to- This is my go-to lure. I'm down to one Fred left. Right, We've got a whole lot more coming in, but uh, those things are selling like hoot cakes. Little guy there, but a lot of fun. We're going to let him go. So what is Fred? Fooling redfish every day. I did that entire one podcast and said fooling redfish every time. Man. Uh, That's embarrassing. Yeah, looking back, that was a little bit embarrassing. But then again, it happens. And our promise to you is that these are uncut, unedited. But I was we standing right next to you, I didn't even notice show it. Show you so. the good, the bad, the ugly. Well, Joel did. Joel's sitting there like, man, he's so passionate about it. Should I tell him that, <laughs> that he's off? Joel's our camera guy. And then afterwards, as soon as we get done, Joel's like, hey, I'm pretty sure Fred is, is not fret. He's fooling redfish every day. I was like, you gotta be kidding me. But it happens. It does happen. Um, yeah, I might go to Leprechaun, dude. That's a... Uh, when you're fishing in, I don't know, two to three feet of water, like this where we're maybe four right now, that thing is just deadly. 
absolutely deadly. Got some new power prawns we're uh, playing around with right now. Dude, how pumped are you about that? Yeah, they're gonna be good. Yeah, any of these new rods, I'm actually using one of our uh, one of our no, test no rods. One see it. No one see it. And this is actually my first time on the water with it, and this thing is, is very that the one nice. I was using earlier. Yes. Yeah, I caught a few trout with that. This but, thing um, has very good feel. Yeah, it is one of the lighter in a good balanced way sensitive rod you can feel everything all right i'm bringing fred back in i'm gonna go put some some leprechauns on but yeah guys yeah. this is the real world what happens some days overcast kind of windy not not the day that you would really want to pick especially when you have a control motor so why and, and it's just i think all everyone's experiencing this right now for whatever reason, it's tough to get work done for anything. Uh, and same with troll motors. It used to be take that in and be fixed a couple days, and now we're going on weeks. I don't know. Do we even have a time? No idea. Uh, depression. The frustration. Aggravation. No suntan lotion. Yeah, and so, right, um, yeah, Joe, if you could t turn the motor the other way. So, just as far as positioning, the boat positioning when you're drift fishing. Um, so right now the channel is basically right, you know, probably 50 yards to the, maybe actually 100 feet um, over here to our left. We don't want to get close to the channel, right? We don't want to have, we don't want to make, mess up any boats. So I power pulled down and that swung the boat back. And now Joe turned the motor so that when I lift the power pull up, we're now going to kick over that way a little bit, right? We don't want to go into the channel. We want to make sure that we, that we stay safe. So now I'm going to go back up. We use the power pull to stop us to go straight with the wind, and then we do the, the, the motor to kick us over one way or the other. So now as we lift up, you should see the boat start kicking over, over to this side. And just as far as max fish catching, right, just like always, look for potholes, look for anything different. Um, potholes, depth changes, and, uh, and just cover ground. And uh, if, if you have these lures rigged properly, they will absolutely catch whatever's down there. This is a, a, just a great way to go out and have some guaranteed action. Even you know, if you don't have a troll motor, even when the weather isn't ideal, uh, we have a, kind of a weak tide, we're in between the moons. So the current flow is really not doing anything, anything special. Um, this is just about just going out and, and just having some guaranteed action. It might not be the best fish, right? It might not be trophies, but it's at least gonna be some action. Great, great way to go out and take some kids out fishing. Um, especially if somebody new to artificial lures, this is a great way to go out and, and to get some action again because these fish, there's usually a pretty good amount of them and even when the conditions aren't very, all, all that great, um, they'll, still, they'll still hit. All right, Leprechaun Dr. Juice back in action. So kind of crazy and I'm a little bit freaked out right now. Those of you guys have been listening to Unchurched, a little Sunday podcast, I talked about new house wife and I, it's an older house, but it's new to us. And I mentioned earlier, it's tough to get work done right now. So we have these old 1970 cabinets that are made out of beautiful cypress wood. Tough to find this stuff anymore. And it's tough to get help. And even the prices we were getting were just obnoxious. And it was so far out, we're like, let's do it ourselves. So we are painting our own cabinets and I understand why people do charge a lot of money. It is a lot of work. But here's what's interesting, Luke. We did a whole podcast on scent, meaning what fish smell, and we had the negative scents. Yep. And we talked about not to store your line, your lures, anything else, uh -huh. in, in and around any kind of chemicals, gasoline, paints, etc. Yep. So we have a small little garage guest house. Oh, it's still on. And um, we're putting all these cabinets in there. So, you know, it takes multiple layers of primer and then paint. And I'm, by the way, I'm on a trout. So my thesis here is getting a little bit rebuked. Although, you know, I am sometimes lucky when I got Alabama leprechaun jumping to go. <laughs> but it smells horribly. I mean, that's why you have to put them in like a separate room because this paint is, oh, I just quick release. Touch the leader of the soda cannon. But this, um, you know, this paint is like lethal to be breathing. I mean, like we're having to wear like full on respirators. And so I, I walked in and I realized, holy smokes, I had all of these rods and my tackle sitting in that room. 
Well, that's a bad like, idea. Absorb. Oh, Luke says it don't matter. Well, listen, if I ever have a bad day, I'm blaming it on that. No, I said it was a bad idea. I didn't say oh, it yeah, didn't matter. Oh, yeah, I thought you said it didn't matter. Yeah, it is a bad No, idea. it definitely matters. Yeah, you do not want to uh, store your stuff in dang. even garages with, like, gas tanks. A lot of people have, you know, gasoline for lawnmowers, weed whackers, and then put their, their tackle in there. It's not Yeah, not and so good. That, that book by Paul Johnson, you know, had a whole couple chapters on that about negative fish. Oh, I'm still getting some hits, though. Fish, uh, what do they call them? Fish tracks? Fish trails. Fish trails. And that, you know, he would go underwater, so he would have two guys, like Luke and I, up front of a boat, dropping different lures down while he was scuba diving, kind of observing. And in his case, it was bass. And I mean, just from a few, couple feet away, every time, if one had been in and around any kind of chemicals, gasoline, et cetera, even just the angler touching something with gasoline, et cetera, and then tying a line that they were going after the other lure. And uh, man, it's really, it's almost kind of scary that you could be in the right spot. Oh, but it's not that scary when I'm still catching trout right in Luke's face. Woo! I, yeah, I just missed Alabama one. Alabama leprechaun. But it is kind of scary that you could be in the right place. You know, we talk about the 90-10 zone. You could be in the, then the 90 zone where all the fish are, the tin zone, where 90% of the fish are, and still blow it because you have a handicap from all the chemicals getting in your line and your lures. Yeah, we're about but, to get some big waves this here. This trout didn't count, didn't care. Look at that, show me the gold. Small little guy, we'll get him back in there quick, let him grow up. Oh yeah, yeah we're definitely getting, getting some big waves. And for this those is that, one of the bad parts about uh, fishing right here next to. No, but it's an example of for you know you just don't have to go to like a secret spot, right? It's not about trying to find some spot that nobody ever fishes, right? We're right next to a very busy waterway, as you can see. We've got boats blasting by us right now. These guys are like, um, oh, now we know Salt Strong's secret top secret. Yeah, spot. we're catching a lot of fish. Like years ago, we never would have even considered fishing a spot like this. Um, just because we thought it'd be too busy, like they're, you know, the fish get spooked. These fish, they're they're acclimated to a lot of boat. Oh, I just had a hit right there. They're acclimated. Yeah, we had the Calypso cat, like a 35 foot <laughs> boat with 40 people on there, buzzing by, and a trout hit right then. Yeah, you know, these these fish, they're they're acclimated to a lot of a lot of traffic. And as long as the right conditions are there, right? In this case, we're near a channel. We have depth changes, and we have some structure in the form of seagrass. Um, there's going to be fish. So this is this is undoubtedly the easiest way to go out and just guarantee some fish catching. And when you have Alabama leprechaun and Dr. Juice, your chances go up big time. And so where I was finally going to go with this long conversation about scent is the first thing in my mind when I woke up and I was realized that all my gear had been stored in this room where, I mean, chemicals are just taking over in terms of this paint smell. And I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna load up on Dr. Juice. That's what I did. At least for the first couple of, uh, of feet of both my leader and even in the braid, I was just rubbing Dr. Juice on that to try to mask. And, and a lot of times, look, we, we've talked about this before, you know, a lot of these scents meaning these different lure scents from the procures to Dr. Juice, I mean, they, they clearly can help you catch more fish and, and have, but some of it is less of like a fish attractant and more of a, of a masking mechanism to get rid of all of those negative fish tracks that just no, normal everyday life that yeah, we I mean, uh, just subject ourselves to. Well, just, even just human scent alone is a, is a deterrent, so Oof. it's... Even if you're not dealing with gasoline or paint or whatever, just, just touching the lure yourself is actually a, a bad thing. Cigarette smoke, ooh, bad. Alcohol, not bad. In case you guys like to drink cold beer. That was, that was a funny one. Urine, wasn't that a neutral one? Some I believe of the funny so, ones yeah. that were uh, cigarette smoke, but not a good one. So last thing you want to be doing is smoking up your Virginia Slims. <laughs> Or Marlboros. And then tying knots. Just kills your chances. That was a, that was a probably one of our most downloaded podcasts. We'll make sure that Courtney here, who's probably listening and putting some of the show notes together, that we put a link 
to that fish tracks, the one we did with the book, The Scientific Angler. Because, I mean, it is so helpful. Because as fishermen, we want every possible advantage, right? We want to make sure that we are maximizing every cast, maximizing every trip that we take. And now, ironically, we're getting back to one of our little bait spots up here. Yeah, huh. right where we caught some bait. It's funny. There's a ton of small bait. And also, right now, as we're filming this, some of you in, in, in our area of Florida, Central Florida region, Tampa, St. Pete, might be wondering, hey, you know, how's red tide? fish kill and all that, and uh, we have seen a lot of really bad signs. Man, there's a lot of fish right here. Um, but we are like, right now, we are right in the middle. Right, Luke, we got yeah, there's a couple some, miles on each side of us, there's... Yeah, supposedly, yeah, some reports of it about five miles south, and then about 10 miles north, there's been some reports too. I haven't seen any anything here yet. And as soon as, as, soon as I do, I'll, I'll really just stop fishing, right? Just give those fish just some, uh, some breathing room. Yep. And, and certainly, I mean, we can't tell you what to do. I'll just tell you our take on it. Uh, Luke nailed one, but two, if you are fishing and that's, that's fine, uh, personally, I would release everything. Um, I know everyone kind of got excited that, you know, parts of the Gulf finally got the redfish and snook and, and trout back. Some still don't, but I mean, this is not the time to be keeping fish, in my opinion. Like I said, you can do what you want, but I think as anglers, if we really are concerned about the future and making sure our kids and our grandkids have amazing opportunities to go out there and catch fish, it, I don't know, to me it's a no-brainer to release everything when the, the water quality in, in our fisheries get destroyed. And I mean, red tide's been around forever and, uh, it, it, and it, it's horrible to see it. I feel like because of some man-made issues from runoffs and fertilizers and you know we've had all kinds of different spills and things over the years and unfortunately exacerbates is that the word sounds good five dollar word exacerbates makes it worse puts fuel in the fire some of this red tide oh did you oh, see that yeah i saw him come oh, up oh dude nice one. right at the boat oh, oh, right oh, at the I boat just, and i, I missed just had it. a nice one too I wasn't even paying attention. All of a sudden, I saw a flash. Oh, there we are. What do you know? Right when we get to the edge right, of the oh, power pole down, dude. Right, we're in the, yeah, that was another nice one. In the honey hole right here. Oh. Dude, that trout came up and hit it right below me. That was awesome. You guys are watching. That was a that was a keeper trout, even though we are going to release it as quickly yeah, as possible. Yeah, that was probably 18 incher. Yeah, that was a. The one I had was solid, too. But always solid when you miss them. Yeah. Big, the ones that get away are always giants, yeah. right? Yeah, and, uh, and again, back to positioning and everything. Literally, I made that turn. If you are watching, I just turned that motor. You saw us veer over to the right, or sorry, to the left. And uh, there, now we got right on the edge of the channel. And that's exactly where these fish are, are hunkered down. Right where they're supposed to be. You can see a channel marker right there. We're not, <laughs> definitely not in a hidden, hidden spot. Got boats coming at us every which way. Probably wondering what are these salt strong guys doing over here? Don't they know the fish are over in the mangroves? <laughs> Sometimes that's true. <laughs> when you, you don't have a troll motor, man, it is, t and especially if it's windy like this. No, I, it's the worst is when there's no, last time was way worse. Well, that, that's true. Yeah, then you can't move at all. At least we have the wind to push us around. But it, so, yeah, I don't know. I, I you like. obviously have to find the, the, the perfect mangrove line to be able to drift. Without, being, without having a really frustrating day. But yeah, if there's no wind, you're just kind of out of luck. Yeah, that's the absolute worst. The yeah, last time there was no wind and no clouds in the sky, and that's like the, the worst possible. The beer tastes better when no wind. <laughs> Where's the opposite? I well, dang it. Where'd these fish go? I don't know. Uh, maybe we shouldn't have power pulled down. I think they're all right. Oh, there's one. There you are. Golly. I, um, I have to check the hook on this thing. It's an older uh, owner twist lock, an older owner twist lock. Yeah, these Mr. these trout have soft soft mouths. It's pretty common to. Oh, there we are. It's pretty common to have hooks pull out. Miss three trout in a row. Not good. All I know is this new rod is amazingly sensitive. Yeah. So for those of you listening and watching, 
We've been working on a, a new rod for quite some time. A little bit of a top secret thing. And we have a couple actually new rods. Ooh. Speaking of, and ho! Yeah, this thing, I mean, I could feel these fish just breathing on it. It is shockingly You're sensitive. Breathing on it? Yeah, I mean, even the pinfish, like it's, it is amazing how good the feel is. And it's, it's stiff enough to get some good hook sets. There's actually a, uh, yeah, I, I was trout. actually getting better hook sets with that rod earlier before we started filming than yeah. my trusty we'll old TFO. Yeah. Still love TFO. So not a giant guy, but again, I had this thing rigged weedless and it's getting the good hook set on these little guys. Make sure there's no cormorants around. All right, so All I right. noticed Luke was catching them a little bit deeper, so I'm gonna take his little honey hole there. See if I can't recreate some of that magic. So do you have a tail on yours, Leprechaun? Or are you no. tailless? Yeah, I'm tailless ruthless pinfish but that leprechaun material is pretty durable yeah it works this is this thing right here's got a lot of them and it's just getting just hammered by pretty much every twitch you can feel those pinfish down there just just pecking at it and see i can't feel the pinfish until they actually like really strike it hard that rod man that is yeah this is quickly becoming my new favorite rod this is the first literally the first first time i've had it on the water when it's got a little bit of, of exposed, you can actually see the blank and feel the blank in there. And if you can zoom on that. Yeah, yeah that's, that's like a lot, of, a lot of things have, you know, it's like the ergonomic handle, but this is the actual blank itself. Um, pretty cool. So you can literally feel it there. And so I basically have my thumb on, on the blank there and then my forefinger up here. And there is zero vibration loss when you do that, right? Cork, cork actually deadens the feel a little bit. So it is like that EVA foam. Um, and so having, having just direct exposure to that blank significantly, or at least in my opinion, um, helps out with the feel. Kind of hard to argue against it, really, if you can feel yeah, the blank I mean, itself. We hired one of the premier rod <laughs> architects in the entire world to help create what we consider the perfect inshore saltwater fishing rod for catching our favorite slams. Now you're not gonna use that thing to go, you know, fishing for 45 inch snook and, and a jetty. But we'll have a rod for that as well. But we're starting with one just for our everyday fish in the flats, catching slot and upper slot fish, catching the slams. Yeah, so I can't wait to have that available for everybody. I can't wait to get one myself. Yeah, it'll probably be later this year by time it's all, get them all made and everything. Yeah, once again, nothing's happened quick these days. And for those of you listening, we appreciate all your patience. We, we read your emails, complaints. And trust me, we would like nothing better than to sell you endless amounts of Daiwa reels and rods. <laughs> and it, it's been really, really frustrating. Uh, yesterday I was in the office, just kind of getting a breakdown of where everything is. And the good news is, I mean, we have, I mean, it's, it's like seven figures worth of pending orders on both rods and reels. Yes, over a million dollars. So, and, and some of these are out six months, seven months old. Uh, so good news is it's, I feel like things are slowly getting better. Shipping's finally getting a little bit better. It's not where it needs to be, but it's at least better. And we're gonna have, in the second half of the year, we're gonna have a lot of tackle coming in. So something. really appreciate all the patience. Look at Luke, just Look killing them over there. Another species, so a little jack, jack. attack. Now we're getting really close to the channel. So doing these, you know, doing these outside of the flats things, you get the roamers, like jacks, get a lot of trout, which are the ambush predators. We'll get, probably hopefully get into some Come on there, buddy. Hopefully get into some uh, flounder. And one trick when you get close to these channel markers is to drop a jig. Ah, oh, oh, I missed another one. Drop a jig Son by these channel markers God. here. I am just not having luck getting a good hook set right now. I'm blaming all that paint. All that paint, Joel. Messing me on up. Some it days, it's just tough. Been one of those days. Yeah, you gotta. Uh, we gotta do that 
tip where you actually show it on the side scanner. You see the fish down there. So yes. we get a whole separate tip. First cast. Fish yeah, the channel markers. A lot of times, a lot of times, fish will be holding by these channel markers. Like, oh man, I had something. A lot of times, you know, you a lot of grouper, like small little uh, sea bass and stuff. Sometimes it's just pinfish, but a lot of times there's riprap down on those things. So I always make a point. It's in a you know triple tail, so something had me. It knocked the shrimp down. Triple tail, cobia. I mean, there's all sorts of species. Um, it just takes a lot of time. There's a lot of pilings, and it takes a really accurate cast. If you're more than like two feet away, you probably won't catch anything. And you know why? Because it's structure. You guys, the Red Luke's book, the Redfish one, Redfish Secrets. Oh, there we are. Maximize. <laughs> oh, nice. Maximize yeah, the structure, so I got, I got maximize the fish. Got down there right next to it, and that power prong was just right on the bottom. And a grouper. Oh, nice little grouper, dude. Solid one. Here, we'll take a little picture for our insider report. Let me, uh... Nah, we don't need it. We'll get it out of the video. Okay. Right. Solid guy. Yeah, not a, not a, definitely not a keeper by any means, but they're always fun. Power prawn right out of his face. Look at the teeth on that guy. Whoa. And he decided he wanted to go sooner than later. Yeah, a lot of fun. So there's all real animals, Captain Mike. You get a picture of him, Joel. Or Joel's wiping off the camera. Mike just passes. He's probably wondering, why are these knuckleheads <laughs> in the exact same spot? He just told us where to go get bait. And I, I was kidding around with him. I said, Captain Mike, we don't need live bait. Oh, there we are. We got Slam Shady and Power Prawn now. Oh, oh I missed another Ooh, one. Oh, sea bass. Check this out. So you never know what you're gonna get on these pilings. So there's a actually pretty good sized sea bass for an inshore sea bass. That's pretty awesome. Oh, come on there, buddy. And we have this cormorant, so make sure not to feed. Look at these birds, they drive me crazy. Some people are out here feeding them, and we wanna make sure to never feed those birds. And so I'm gonna like feed an alligator. purposely let him go on the back of the boat. Don't do it. Make sure that bird does not get it. I missed another fish. There, God, no! I am having some serious trouble getting a good hook set. I'm all just jittery and excited. No way you can do three. No way, Luke. A little bit tougher to cast than with that wind, huh? Yep. I don't think you have a chance with that one. Watch out there, you old water turkey gobbler. Um, sea bass are uh, kind of a delightful little fish there. They're delicious. So that was a bad cast. They so don't get the respect. I didn't have a chance on that one. But they deserve. And that's what we grew up doing. Remember that? When we, uh, Dad had an old 24-foot well craft. Oh, yeah. And we, we, uh, we our grandfather had a, a place in Daytona Beach our whole, our whole, whole lives, really. So we'd spend every summer there and uh, we'll learn how to cut our teeth on the surf fishing. Oh. And then we go out in Dad's old 24 well craft and we would target the heck out of some sea bass. We had some honey hole sea bass spots off Daytona Beach. And I don't even remember what we were using. Was it squid back then? Yeah, we are just bottom fishing. Mostly just squid, dropping it down. And, but man, mama would be happy we brought home some sea bass. Yeah, that's, they're delicious too. It's tasty. Sea bass. Reminds me of Dumb and Dumber, right? You know what I'm talking about? Making four boilermakers. <laughs> sea bass. I need to get right. a oh. sea bass t-shirt. Oh, dang, I have something you else. Have another one? Dog, I think on. those are just pinfish. So this is another test rod. This one's an extra fast blank. And uh, again, same thing. This one's almost a little bit too light. I've been missing hook sets with it. So yeah, oh. we're just testing out a bunch of different, a uh, bunch of different rods looking for the ultimate inshore rod. I think this one with the leprechaun is it. So, so that's an extra fast? Yeah, this is an extra fast tip. What do you think? Do you like the extra fast? I do, I think it, I just think it needs to go up a level uh, on power. Yeah. Because the, the tip is so flimsy. And, um, wet noodle? It's not like a wet noodle war rod, but it's close to it. It's not as bad as uh, a lot yeah, of others have used. Yeah, some more backbone. All right, we'll so. We'll make it tougher. 
So now we got to make right. sure that we drift right down the edge and so don't go back into to drifting. Channel. If you guys are listening, we stopped at a channel marker so that Luke could catch a couple fish in my face. And now we're going to keep on drifting. I still got my trusty leprechaun on, had some nice strikes, had multiple trout on, just can't seem to keep them. But then again, red tides all around us. So I feel like I'm doing the fish a favor. <laughs> if you're listening fish, you're welcome. Yeah, I'm, I'm praying it, it does not hit this area, obviously, and gets a little bit better before it gets worse. You never want to pray for really nasty tropical storm winds, but also that does blow off and out a lot of the bad stuff. And we are approaching, when does hurricane season start? I don't know. Some listener. Hopefully we'll chime in in the comments and let us know. June 1st? <laughs> we should ask our camera guy, Joel. June the 1st. So man, we're already in the midst of it. And it goes to like November or something crazy, right? Do you know that one too? Yeah, it goes a long way. November, November 1st, October 31st. I'm gonna fact check Joel here. Oh yeah, living here in Florida. Both Luke and I were born and raised and we spent a few years in Texas, five years in Texas and a decade in Georgia. I married a little Georgia girl. But brought her back to Florida. And now she's like, why would I ever want to live in Georgia? I'm just kidding, all you Georgia fans. I, uh, I thoroughly enjoyed my time there. Georgia is a cool state because at least where I was in the you know North Atlanta area, we could go up to Blue Ridge Mountains, a little place called Blue Ridge, Georgia, Cherry Log, Georgia, Ella J, Jasper, if you guys know what I'm talking about, you've been there. Man, one of my favorite places and still, you know, a few hours, not really four hours, going eastward, you can do some nice fishing and have the beaches, St. Simons. Beautiful area over there. And then of course you could go straight down to Destin as well, the Panhandle. I like Georgia, but still want to live in Florida. I like to visit those other places. Luke, you've only lived, I guess you lived in England, in New York for like six England, months. England, New York, North Carolina. Florida's where it's at, I think. I don't know, they're all fun. Yep. Everywhere's fun. What do you guys think? You gotta leave us a comment. A lot of times it's wherever you grew up, because okay? you gotta kind of have what you like to do kind of set. I personally love to fish all year long, and so Florida's for me. But uh, it is kind of cool seeing the seasons too. That is one thing that we don't have. That was pretty neat seeing that up in uh, New York or Rochester. I don't think it's that cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool until it starts snowing and freezing. You get to scrape ice off your car in the morning. Yeah, so thank I, you. So I saw well, there's a little pot of bait right up here about 100 feet up. Getting plowed by some... And oh, usually, man. usually there'll be some predators hanging around them, so we'll figure we'll... God dang. We'll hang here for a second, see if we can't pick off some more fish. I'm, now, I, now I want to make it a, a point just to break a record. Oh, you know what? That was a needlefish, no wonder. I don't feel as bad. It's like, how am I missing all these strikes? Needlefish. Yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with this rod so far. It's got the Salt Strong logo on it, on the demo. Mm -hmm. And you guys might see, we're still debating this in terms of kind of the, the long-term branding on it. You know, our store is fishstrong.com. That's where you can go buy all of the tackle that, that we recommend. And we're, we're having an internal debate now to, to name the rod. Fish Strong is a, it's a Fish Strong branded rod. So let us know your comments on that as well. Uh, there's obviously pros and cons to each. Sell it either way. Doesn't change the function. Oh my goodness gracious, I missed another one. I'm gonna stop talking and start focusing on setting the hook like a man. But yeah, we're debating the Fish Strong. 
branded rod. Oh, that popped the entire hook out of that one. Jeepers creepers. Slashed it. I what that was that did that. I don't know. I'm, I'm surprised ruthless. we're not getting more fish right here on this cut. Got the bait here. We've got the depth change. Grass going down into the channel. It's the perfect spot. Yep. Minus the fish. They all heard that we were coming with the camera on and said, hey, let's not hit until the camera turned off. How many times does that happen, right? <laughs> all of a sudden we turn the camera off in the podcast and boom. Oh, we're doubling up. We should have left it on. And we had some though that, there it is. There it is. Oh, that's a nicer trout there. Yes. Yes. <laughs> oh no, I just felt hooked it. Unbelievable. Is that, a, is that even a trout? I don't even know. Now, uh, this might be a time just to cut it off. But no, Almost we made, like a lizard fish. We made the promise. Yeah, I'm like fighting it, thinking, oh man, this has got a lot of... Whoa, watch out for that bird. Yeah, Jeez. that's a lizard fish. Make sure that bird doesn't get it too. Well, Joel, that kind of sums up my day. If you guys are listening, I have foul hooked a lizard fish in the belly with a leprechaun. I, I don't even know what to say at this point, uh, except that takes some skill, and I'm still gonna blame it on the paint. Blame <laughs> it on the paint. Let's see here. Man, I have birds all around me. So fake out. Watch this. All right, where's the bird? Do you see him? It, he was right down there. So one of the funniest things to do is you fake like you're throwing, and they'll actually chase it, and you throw behind. Oh, there it is. So look, so look, they're right there and you go out the other way. So they dart lizard fish, even though it's not technically a game fish. He is safe, although he now has a little bit of a piercing in his stomach. <laughs> That's crazy. Oh man. What do you think, man? You wanna close this one up or try to catch one more fish? Uh, yeah, I might as well close it. I mean, we covered the, the basics. This is just, again, an easy way to go out and at least have some guaranteed action. You might not catch trophies, right? We certainly haven't caught trophies today. You might miss five or six fish in terms of hook sets. Yeah, we caught, um, what was that? F four or five, maybe six species, right? So caught a variety of fish, you know, had fish, had at least some action, you know, every like within five, 10 minutes oh. of each other. Oh, and. Uh, just again, an easy way to get to take some kids out or start learning artificials with this. This way you can get used to feeling those strikes, getting those hook sets. Oh, ooh, as I, as I was said hook set, I had to do it. Yeah, there's definitely some fish here. Um, and I love, I mean, one of the coolest parts there was, as I was, as I was turning the motor to fix our drift, trout hit it, right? As the lure's just kind of drifting by. One of the coolest parts of this little drift here, because we were next to a channel, was what Luke did, is have another rod ready with a power prawn and a jig head. And what, you caught two fish right there? Boom, yep. boom, grouper and sea bass. Uh, I think that's a, a cool little, cool little strategy. And we've done that so many times. Let me tell you, a great way just to avoid the skunk, especially if you're there having those days where it's just tough, trying, can't, you know, trying to catch redfish, snook, whatever, can't get them. Just go hit up a couple channel markers. Some old pilings. Drop a power prawn down, especially if you load it with Dr. Juice, you will get hit if there's fish down there. They cannot resist the power prawn. Now, do you like big power prawn or the junior? Oh, I mean, the small one will catch you more fish, the big one will catch a bigger fish. So if you want to weed out the small guys, go with the big one. If you want to just catch something, go with the small one. So I threw that, I threw the small one by that piling, just first of all, because that's what I had on. But. Uh, we're out here, this is just a max fish catching trip. Oh, he's still on, he's still and so on, he's I wanted to make sure that I had it ready. What you got there? Trout, nice little trout. All right, and now now we can officially end it. I have finally, I guess I had that one earlier, at least touch the leader, touch the leader. So you guys don't know, I mean, that is technically in, in sport fishing. I think it started with offshore fishing, right? In terms of te touching the leader. I don't know. It counts as a, as a caught fish. Well, I'm gonna get this. Oh, okay. And get them out of here quick. So I heard the birds behind us. One more safe trap. Yeah, trout. normally we would never throw never. throw fish, but you know we have to do it to keep to keep away from those birds. Stinking birds. All right, well, dude, let's uh let's wrap it up. Let's do it. Wind's picking up. Storms are brewing. 
I hope that I uh, was helpful. I hope uh, I hope you guys enjoy just joy a little bit different way of looking at things like our good old friend Captain Mike Anderson, our friend C.A. Richardson who we've done you know quite a few things with. Love those guys. I personally like watching the TV shows but there's just something cool about seeing the real deal, no cuts, what really happens in the water, the struggles, the lizard fish, the catfish, the stuff that you know fishing shows and even YouTube channels just don't show you. And uh, so hope you guys like it. If, if you do, let us know, because we enjoy doing it. It adds a little bit of stress to our lives. Uh, <laughs> Luke's hair is getting a little bit grayer, but it's also turning a little bit blonde from the sun. <laughs> so we're gonna call it blonde instead of gray. Uh, but let us know, we, we like doing these. We love to hear feedback. If you guys are having certain uh, struggles in terms of certain types of fishing, if it is fishing flats like this, mangrove lines, oyster bars, whatever it is, bridges, uh, let us know. We want to go out and do more of these. We'll probably do some more surf fishing, like live surf fishing tips, now that we have Courtney on board. And look at these waves coming. We definitely have to end this before we fall in, or Luke falls in up front. But uh, let us know. We, we really do enjoy this, and we appreciate you guys big time. And if you haven't joined us in the Insider Club, this is your chance. Saltstrom.com. Come join us. We have a 365-day 100% money-back guarantee where we're doing real-time on-the-water fishing reports every day now. Every 10 minutes, there's new ones going up. We have, obviously, the tackle discounts and the private community that is now exploding. Doing giveaways. We're giving away free tackle every single Monday now. So if you're a current insider and you're missing out, hey, how do I win all this free stuff? We're giving away reels, like cool stuff, every single Monday night. And all you have to do is just be active in the community. That's it, and you're automatically entered. And we pick a new winner every single Monday night. Austin does a great job with that. So uh, please do join us there. We just hit 25,000, Luke, did you see that? I saw 25, that, 25,000 yeah. members in the Insider Club. So it's a big celebration, a big number for us. I remember we're out, actually we were in, in uh, near Fort DeSoto fishing with Captain Mike Goodwine, one of our buddies. And uh, we had just hit 2,000 members, and he's like, man, that's so cool. We were like, we were like blown away. Yeah. We had 2,000, now we just hit 25,000. So it's almost surreal. Uh, I mean, just a, a blessing to have just great people who we, we like hanging around with. Uh, and just having, you catching more fish while I'm talking? You know this. Jeez, Luke. I feel like every time I adjust the steering wheel to control the drift, I catch a fish. And maybe you should just fish with. Yeah, I think just slow, I think just slow crawling head. it through the grass is, uh, granted, this is a little guy. Micro. I can't, I can't even straight arm this guy. This is real small. That's pretty funny. Uh, so that's it, guys. Come join us. Saltstrong.com. We appreciate you big time. We've got some really cool stuff, like this rod, for instance, when we come out with it. Even Fred, who I believe I started this podcast off with. It's been so long now, I don't even remember. And very frustrating day for me. Uh, all that's for insiders only. So just one more reason to join. We're coming up with new products, new tackle. Pretty much every quarter, we're coming up with something new that you can only get as an insider member. And of course, you get up 20% off every single thing in our store, sometimes more. We had a 50% off Father's Day sale. That was nuts. Uh, that was the first time we've ever done that. So come join us, saltstrong.com. We appreciate you big time. Leave us a comment on everything from, what did we ask about today? Hurricane season dates, to what lures you like best, to what kind of fishing you like best to uh, if you like Luke's haircut. So go uh, go leave us a comment there at saltstrom.com, fishing tips section. We'd love to hear from you. Yeah. That's it, Luke, anything else? I think I'm finally getting to the point where I need to cut my hair. This is driving me crazy, where it's like, I have my hat on, try to keep it out of my face, and then the wind's still wrapping around my face. Don't so do it, hair, Hair's gotta go. No, it's not. It's gotta go, it's That's driving me crazy. crazy. Ponytail time. Who thinks no. Luke needs a ponytail? Definitely, definitely not ponytail. <laughs> See you guys, we out, peace. <laughs>